It feels truly amazing to be connected to other human beings. However, you may have noticed that this world is, quote unquote, designed exactly the opposite. It's, it's designed for us to be disconnected. And how does it show up? Well, today I'm going to show you how we use our language because the language is so important the way we connect each other. And the language is designed to completely confuse us, disconnect us, and we use it every day without any questioning. So what are some impossible questions we ask every day to disconnect even more from each other? Beautiful day, Unlimited Sparkle. Today, I'm gonna talk about this impossible question. Hey, how are you doing, by the way? What's up? <laughs> How are you? Well, have you noticed something quite weird about these questions anytime? Because they are not quite exactly designed to inquire about what we really want to know about. And we ask them all the time, really, but what do they really mean? Have you ever thought about what do they really mean? How am I doing? I'm doing, hmm, like really the only answer for that is like, I'm doing like well bad, good, like just doesn't have, it doesn't, it can't possibly ask you about the truth. <laughs> like what is, what is really, there is no inquiry about my feelings or about what is going on in my life or nothing like that. How about what up? Again, what does that even mean? What, what up? How are you doing? How am I doing? How am, how am I? I'm doing good. Yep flesh and right spots and uh, I'm doing yes well mm -hmm. or how about how's everything oh I love this one how's everything all right everything's pretty good yes my nails are growing my hair my my flesh my kidneys are working my life is good like everything really all right so you might think I'm crazy but just think about these questions because we ask them all the time and today I'm gonna give you two alternatives and one amazing thing to do instead and really, let's start just shifting this whole way how we connect to people and how we, how we relate to each other. So those two alternatives, they're pretty easy. You can ask if you really care. <laughs> you can ask, what's alive in you right now? If you don't want to ask about how you're feeling, because you can ask how you're feeling, but sometimes you just have a, like a quick pass with someone and you're just really asking about some highlights. And this brings you a little bit closer to, to connection with that person because then they can start really telling you about what is alive in them. You know, like not what happened last week because that's supposed to be some big event or um, tell you that they are okay or they are unwell or bad, good, whatever. But they can really tell you the details about what is alive in them. Or sometimes check with yourself maybe you don't really want to know maybe you just really don't want to know maybe you're just passing by and you're just saying it automatically you're like hey how are you doing and you don't really care so what do you say you can just say hey nice to see you because that just sounds way more authentic in that moment but just forget about all this small talk i personally don't like small talk i actually don't do small talk <laughs> um but i love the question about what's alive in you right now Ugh. And I love talking about feelings, but there is one way of really connecting with people instead of going into this small talk. And that's really asking them about, hey, would you like to do a check-in? And they go like, what's a check-in? Well, check-in is when you really check in with your body and with your mind and with your soul about how are you feeling and what is your life in you, what's going on in your life. And you give a quick summary, maybe a short one, or maybe you agree on doing a check-in for one minute or two minutes, whatever. Uh, but that will bring you to a completely different state. And so imagine before two friends meeting, hey, how are you doing? Sure, cool, yeah, it's fine. Have you heard about the hurricane and, and you know, the, the things and what happened in Nicaragua and all these things. So instead of going in there, you can go like, hey, do you want to do check-in? Sure. So you do check-in and you go like, wow. So you find out that actually the second person or the third, whatever, it can be a group of people. It's good to do check-ins when you have like two, three friends, four friends, because then you really know where you're at. 
and you may see that some of them actually feel really sad or felt really lonely on that day. Some of them were just in a car accident, maybe in the morning, or some of them just fell in love and you know like all these things that sometimes it would take some time to get there now you can go there straight away and now you can go even deeper and you can start connecting even deeper so I love that I love doing check-ins and every time I remember I just ask people even sometimes in the middle of a conversation when I feel like well we're talking about all these things and I'm not really feeling connected I say, can we do check-in? People go like, sure, or people go like, what's that? <laughs> so either way, you show them what it is and you do a quick check-in and it's just so beautiful. So I hope that this will give you some alternative and you start using your language in a different way or maybe you find some new ways of connecting by using your language in a different way. In which case, I would love to hear about more techniques and tips uh, in the comments below and yeah, send this video to anyone who does small talk and just always talk superficially or you find it so hard to connect to them because now you can have a little bit more meaningful, meaningful conversations at least to get started. So thank you so much for watching and how far are you willing to go to truly connect to other people?